Hi, this is Ms. Wiles, and in this video, we'll be looking at an exponential growth word problem and interpreting some information about it. The number of people that subscribe to a magazine can be modeled by the function s of t equals 57 times 1.3 to the 12t power, where t is the number of months since the magazine was released. Which statement best describes how the number of people who subscribe to the magazine is changing? Now, the information that I want to give you about this problem is that you have a standard, like um, a parent form for an exponential growth equation, and that would be when you have a times 1 plus r to the t power. If this was, if this particular problem, if, it was 57 times 1.03 to the t power, then the growth would be the 3% that we see here. This would be our growth of 3%. If the exponent was t all by itself, it has to be t all by itself for you to take the growth directly from what you see in the parentheses in the exponential formula. Because this formula, or this equation, has 12t for the um, exponent, this is not the way we would do this problem. And c would be the most often chosen answer, but it is not correct for this problem because the exponent is not t. Now, what you have to remember about doing this kind of problem is that this value, this 3% increase that is happening, is not happening every month. It's happening like every 12 months. And because of that, we have to figure out what the actual increase is um, in another way. Now, you can do some deductive thinking, and you can eliminate something else. If this is... We see 3% annually and 3% monthly. Those probably, because they're both 3%, probably not true. So we, we might be thinking about 43%. But the point, the biggest point is that the most, what you think is the most obvious answer is definitely there, but definitely wrong because the exponent is not t. So here's what you would do. You would never be expected to do this kind of problem without a calculator, so here's what you'll do. You'll turn on your handy-dandy calculator, and I'm going to give me some more light here so that we can see this screen. We have a function here, and I'm looking for what happens to it monthly, what happens to this monthly, or what happens to it annually. So I'm going to look at the, the difference um, for, let's say, one month to two months. Now, this is really complicated because you really have to analyze the whole thing and understand what's happening. After one month, we started with 57 people that had subscribed to this magazine. And after one month, if we substitute one for t, we just put it straight in the calculator, just like we see it here, and we substitute one for that t. At the end of the first month, we should have 81, about 81 people subscribed to this magazine. The second month, the only thing that changes is the T changes to a 2. So I'm going to go up and copy that and change that 1 to a 2 because at the end of the second month, I'm going to have 115 people subscribe to the magazine. That's a pretty big jump. And when it's a pretty big jump, you can say, well, it's not 3%, because 3% is a small jump. Now, if I want to know exactly what this jump is, I take what I ended up with, that 115, I subtract what I had the end of the first month, that 81. I get an answer, and I divide it by what I had the first month, at the end of the first month, divided by 81. Now, I get about 
which is about 43%. So that's our answer, but why does this work? The reason that this works is because we're looking at percent of change. How much does a, a value change over a period of time? And this value has changed, the amount that it's changed is 34. A percent of change is found by taking the amount of change, the number of the change, and dividing it by the original amount. And that works all the time. The number of the change divided by the original amount. So you might think, well, Ms. Wiles, can I, can I just use the first number that we have? Can I use this 57? Where at the beginning, at, at, when we start, we have 57, and then at the end of the first month, we have 81? Well, we should be able to. If I took the 81 and subtracted the 57, I would get 24. And what did I start with? I started with 57. So I would divide that by 57, and I would get 42 again, because it has an average percentage of increase of 42% which is about 43, and remember that you're always choosing the best answer. So some things to remember here. Most important things to remember here is that if your exponent is just a variable, you can just take your increase or decrease straight from inside the parentheses. <coughs> and so you hope you have questions like that, which you will, but if it's not, then it's more complicated and you have to look for values. You could make a table, the beginning value, and then the second value. For the beginning value, make t or x or whatever it is equal zero. For the second value, make it equal one. Or pick any two, pick like two and three. Pick whatever you want, but look for a difference and then divide, it, divide that number by the original. Will you have to rewatch this video? Probably, is this one of the most complicated questions in the entire series of videos that we've done? I think so. Um, but that's really all I have to say about that because you don't want to scramble your brains with a problem like this so much that you can't do all the other ones that you should have been able to do. So my advice on that is that if you come to a problem that is just so very difficult that it's going to really take a lot of energy for you to do it, skip it. Do other problems that you know how to do and then come back to that problem if you have time and if not, pick your favorite letter and go on from there. Mm -hmm. That's all I have to say about that and thank you for watching.